Hey everyone, Mid Journey version 5.2 is finally here. I'm so excited. There's a lot to go over. Let's take a look. Let's start with what I think you'll find the most important, and that's the new zoom out feature. Here's how it works you'll take your generation, a close up of a retro sports car, unsplash. I put close up in the prompt to emphasize the point. I think zoom out will be really useful when your subject just isn't quite in the frame correctly. And I was pretty sure that was going to happen when I used the word close up. You're going to pick a generation you like. I like number one so you hit upscale and now you're gonna get a few more options you'll see very strong and very subtle but don't worry about those for now take a look at zoom out 2x and zoom out 1.5 there's also custom zoom and make square we'll go through all of them starting with zoom out 1.5 it does pretty much exactly what you think it would zooms it out just a little bit but look how powerful that is and take a look at this zoom out times two like holy cow man oh more goosebumps this is insane every picture is now able to be saved. I know you can't really tell Mid Journey to like place the car in the middle of the street more, but the point is is that you're never stuck anymore. Any framing that Mid Journey does can now be zoomed out and that is so cool. Oh my god, that's insane. These are so good. And you know what's really addicting? Hitting zoom out again. Like, obviously I gotta show you. While that's generating, we can look at what happens when you hit make square. It basically just cuts the image down into a square and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around because I swear that looks the same as it did before it's just in a different ratio that picture turns into these how does it do that i don't know my brain can't really figure it out but that's pretty cool right especially if you're looking for like specifically instagram photos this is almost a perfect feature for that and i don't think that was on purpose it just happens to work out like that i'm pretty sure <laughs> oh whoa look at these so this is like four times farther back than our original pretty crazy that it can even do this but i will say this isn't exactly like out painting where in a program like dolly or even in Photoshop, you continually paint around the edges of your photo and eventually you would be able to sit back and see the whole thing but then you would also be able to zoom in and get really good detail like one of those never ending pictures. Unfortunately that is not how this works. Like just because this is four times zoomed out it doesn't mean that these pictures are now four times as big of a file with all that previous information still inside. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It really is just a zoomed out picture. You can't zoom back in after. You know? You know what I mean? Maybe Maybe you will be able to do that in the future, but for now, that's not how it works. It's kind of like a monkey's paw situation. You can't get everything you want. But the other thing you can try is this custom zoom button. It'll bring up a prompt box, and this is where you can change a couple of things. First of all, you can completely rewrite the prompt. Second of all, you can customize the zoom, but it's not really that custom. You can only make it a number between one and two. Eh, whatever. Try and keep that in mind. But the other important thing is here, you can actually change the aspect ratio. And from the mid journey team, they recommend changing the zoom to one when you're changing the aspect ratio. So we're gonna go zoom one, and then let's try two by three. I don't quite know how it's gonna work. It's probably not gonna work that well. Okay, wait, how did it do that? How did it make it in a two by three, but it kept the same picture? Like, what am I missing? Why can't I process what it's doing? Like, we go from this to these. I get they expanded on the top and the bottom, but like, it's still the same picture. Like, that is so powerful. So powerful. And I want to really emphasize that. Previously, like yesterday, doing something like this was literally impossible. If you got a generation, it was stuck on that prompt in that ratio. There was no way to recreate that scene in another frame. Like, this is fantastic. But let's also change the prompt. And I mean really change it. Let's just go super random. A dog in space. What do you think it'll do? And then, oh, a dog in space. Um, I don't really know what the thing these are these are hilarious i love number three and i love number four i just don't know what to think why would you ever change the prompt if this is what happens this is kind of like the remix feature though i guess where if you change the prompt you're still keeping the same picture you're just kind of adding on to it so maybe i'll have to experiment more but please if there are any use cases for this that will work out better than the dog in space please let me know the next big feature that i think you're going to want to know about is how they change the stylized value according to the notes the style stylize command has been fixed to have a strong effect on the amount of stylization applied to your image. Now what that basically is saying is how closely is Mid Journey going to follow your prompt. At a low stylized value, it's going to follow it directly. And if you didn't write a very complicated prompt, you might not get something that good looking. However, on the other side of things, you can write a really short prompt, bump up the stylized value and get something absolutely beautiful. It might not follow your prompt to a T, but 
but a higher stylized value gives Midjourney some creative freedom and it can come up with some absolutely amazing stuff. And this update has only expanded its ability to do that. And the way we test this is by using the same prompt with the same seed. Here's Psychedelic Superhero Intricate Armor. We're using seed 828847, completely random. And our stylized value is set to zero for this one. And here's what it comes up with. I gotta admit they're pretty cool looking, but they're not that great. They're not beautiful. Same prompt, same seed at the base stylized value, the default 100. I can get behind these. Everything's the same except this is stylized 400 and already these are getting way more beautiful, like way more beautiful behind. Here is 600 and like, oh, I like number four. I like number two. I like number three a lot. This is starting to get really good. Same seed, same prompt. You got to remember that. And on the extreme side of things, the highest you can go S1000, you get these as uh, more goosebumps. It's a lot to take in. They're so beautiful. And I really think the point of this is just to emphasize play with the stylized values. If you have a favorite prompt or if you have a prompt that's not working quite right, increase the stylized value. It's really powerful now and you can get some sick stuff. And if been keeping these prompts pretty simple to showcase the new version but if you're interested in more of how i think you can check out my prompt pack available on my website it has 51 unique prompts where i show you exactly how to make certain types of images you can copy and paste directly from the pdf into discord i will note everything was generated on version 5.1 but i'm pretty confident all those prompts will work well moving forward it's really just a recipe book to spark your creativity Check it out, let me know what you think. Back to the update. The next big thing I think you're gonna wanna know about is the new variation system. They call this high variation mode. It is turned on by default. You can change this though in your settings. Now when you click the V button under one of your prompts, it's going to give you a much wider variety in those images. So take this prompt for an example. Pixel Art Chrono Warrior. Previously, if you were to hit variation under one of these images, it would honestly barely change the image. They refer to it as subtle variations and that's what it was. It's not going to change the colors, it might change like the way the hair flows, maybe it changes some of the armor. And what's so important is that in this prompt, you're getting four pretty distinct images. Let's say you really like the look at number one. You like that it's got this background, or maybe you like the look at number three. If you hit V3, look what it comes up with. Like that's crazy. Just yesterday, it was again impossible to do this and this is what I've been waiting for since like October back in version 3. Now we get four more very distinct variations of that character on the blue background. But let's say you like number one. Now look at these. It's insane. It just allows you to go so much deeper into your generations. Instead of nitpicking little subtle variations, now you get to really explore what else Midjourney can do with a basic template that you've selected. And just for the record, let's say you upscaled one of these. Let's go with number two. No, let's go with number one. I think this will be easy to see. So we're gonna upscale number one and watch. I'll hit very subtle. And this will be how it's worked for like the past eight months. So take a look at our guy and try and remember what he looks like. And now do you see like he's still just a guy holding a sword to the right side of him and he's got flowing red hair. Very subtle variations. They are different. They're not the same, but how different are they? You know, to a lot of people, I think myself included, not different enough knowing what we know is possible with this technology. So if you hit very strong, which again is the default now, you get these like, oh, oh my God, that's so cool. Like, oh, this is amazing. A bunch of different characters. And like, again, it just means that you're not locked into anything anymore. Now, every generation you're just kind of happy with can be explored to the fullest and that is so exciting. Please note that the high variation mode is limited to 5.2. And I also think this prompt is a good example of showing you another one of the big changes in 5.2. There's now going to be more variety and diversity within your generations. Previously, all four pictures would kind of look the same. Now you're going to get four pretty different looking pictures. And I think that's so perfect for mid journey. They have warned us that you might need to re-roll a little more than usual. And they are sorry about that. But honestly, Honestly, I think this is better for the future of the platform. And the next big feature I think you're going to want to check out is this new shorten command. You can hit forward slash shorten to get your prompt analyzed. And it's going to tell you which words in your prompt were actually useful. So let's try to write a long, complicated prompt and see how Mid Journey fixes it. Let's go with midnight on the sun, uh, epic scenery high voltage, cinematic still, Canon EOS 40 millimeter F1 over eight, 
4K Ultra HD stunning visuals. Just word salad. You hit enter. Check this out. Midnight on the sun. Epic scenery is good. High voltage cinematic still. It's crossed out Canon EOS. 40 millimeter does not care about that. F1 over 8 still kind of matters. It cut out 4K, kept Ultra HD and stunning visuals. And then it's given you some shortened prompts here up to five of them. Midnight on the sun, epic scenery, high voltage, cinematic, UHD visuals. Okay. But you want to see the really crazy thing? Down here, you can hit show details and it actually shows you like how important each word was. So for some reason, voltage is worth a 1.0 and I'm just assuming that's the highest. Meanwhile, cinematic was just 0 0.01. Still did nothing. Canon did nothing. EOS did nothing. 40 millimeter did nothing. Now, anytime you see that in a prompt, now you're going to know it's not really doing anything. And I've been trying to advocate for that for a long time, but I'm not really a vocal person. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. It's just the truth though. Mid Journey doesn't really know, understand, or use these words the way you think it does, which is understandable. It was kind of a hard system to learn, but I'm pretty sure this is proof. And I think that's really exciting and really helpful. And now every prompt engineer has a way to actually see if what they're doing matters. I do kind of want to see what this looks like though. You know what, let's generate all of them and see how the words affected it. One thing to note while we wait for those to generate, shorten does not work with multi prompts. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's start at the most simple version of the prompt and then we'll work up adding some words as we go. Sun voltage. These are actually some pretty sick pictures. These are, I, I like these a lot. Those are really cool. A few extra words, midnight on the sun, high voltage. Again, I'm not, I'm not mad. Midnight on the sun, epic high voltage. I think that's fairly accurate. These are a little more epic. Midnight on the sun, epic scenery, high voltage cinematic. A big difference here, a, a very different vibe. Is it the epic scenery? It could be the epic scenery or maybe cinematic has that big of an effect, even though above it said it was only at 0.01. Really not sure on that. Could just be a random seed thing too. Midnight on the sun, epic scenery, high voltage cinematic, ultra HD visuals. We didn't, these are way different. I don't I don't know how it got to these. I mean, they're still really cool. I think number one's really pretty. Actually, I like number two a lot as well. Okay, before we go, I'll do a direct test between version 5.1 and the new version 5.2. What should the prompt be? What do you want to see? We're going to go ice cream, snow angel, raising her voice to the clouds above. And instead of writing two prompts, you can compare them directly just using this little trick. First, we're gonna type in a seed number, blah, 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 doesn't matter. And then we're gonna hit this squiggly bracket to start a permutation. We're gonna type V 5.1 so that one of these prompts uses version 5.1. But then here's the trick. You're gonna hit comma, comma. Now what those commas did was allow us to have one prompt be version 5.1 and then the next prompt would not have that in it. And because version 5.2 is the default, not including 5.1 gives us what we want, which is a direct comparison between the two algorithms. Here's the ice cream snow angel in version 5.1 using this seed number. And these are kind of strange. So it's a pretty bad prompt. I'm not worried about it. This is just to show you the differences between 5.1 and 5.2 whoa i uh, w uh i was not expecting this i might need to blur out number two i don't that's not there's no nudity but that's a little suggestive maybe for youtube standards i'm not sure <laughs> still still a weird prompt pretty weird generations but there is a pretty big difference between 5.1 and 5.2 there you have it i tried breaking everything down for you it's getting late here i gotta edit this video let me know what you think if you're as excited as i am don't forget to check out my prompt pack in the description below i hope you're doing well take care and i'll see you next time peace